happy because otherwise it won't, we'll, I'll forget. I'm so excited that we're doing um, this Adobe training this morning and we're focusing on the self-care as, as our content to learn these skills. But then we're thinking also, how do we use these um, beautiful programs and different solutions when you're on placement as well? And of course, as future teachers as well. So uh, I'm gonna hand over to Geordie and thank you for coming and spending this next hour with us. Thanks, Narelle, um, and thank you everyone for having me today. Um, my name's Geordie, I'm an Adobe Digital Coach at Swinburne. I'm also a graphic designer when I'm not working at Swinburne. Um, so yeah, more than happy to take you through um, some of the great Adobe products today. Um, yeah, I think a quick thing to note, and Narelle might have mentioned this, um, Swinburne is an Adobe creative campus. And what that means is um, everyone, whether that be staff or students, gets access to all of the Adobe programs. Um, and there's heaps and heaps of programs you can use. Um, and we'll take you through a couple today. Um, but also you can access us, um, the digital coaches, just by booking a one-on-one -on -one session. If you do need help with something, we also do drop-ins like we're doing today. We do workshops. Um, I think the Adobe Hub is actually opening today on campus. Um, so from 12.30 till 2.30, um, one of the digital coaches will always be there. So please, please, please use us, um, reach out. Um, we're more than happy to help. Um, so with that said, we might get stuck into um, what we're gonna cover today. Um, and in terms of what we will be covering today, there's a few little things we're going to be going over to kind of tie in with the work you've been doing around self-care. Um, and we're going to be using Adobe Spark to generate content um, to support um, this self-care work you've been doing um, and that you will be doing on your professional placements. Um, so we're going to be covering Adobe Spark Post um, and Adobe Spark Video today. Um, and then towards the end of the session, we'll hopefully have some time to take any questions you might have. Um, but for today, I'm, I'm definitely encouraging everyone to make along with me. We're going to be doing an example um, both for Spark Post and Spark Video. Um, so please, if you can, um, head to www.spark.adobe.com um, and sign in there with your student emails. Um, you should just be able to get access straight away into that. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen and thank you, Narelle, for sharing that link there. Okay. So once everyone's jumped into that link um, that Narelle has kindly put in the chat, um, we're going to be greeted with this in interface here. Um, and again, make sure you have signed in. Um, with your student um, emails, as you will be able to access it. Um, I'll just give everyone just maybe a few more seconds to sign in um, until we get to this page here. Um, but basically, when we do land on this page, um, this is the interface we're going to be working with. Um, and there's a few things to note here. Um, Adobe Spark is both a desktop and a mobile program. So the Adobe desktop program, it kind of molds in Adobe Post, Adobe um, Spark Video and Adobe Spark Page. Um, so it is my preference to work within the desktop version um, because you can access all of them at once. But for you guys, um, I know you're gonna be using Instagram a lot for your professional placements. So I'd also encourage you to download um, to download the mobile versions as well um, because it makes it really accessible. If you're out on professional placement, you can be capturing content, you can be posting content. Um, so there are options there for you. So both um, mobile and desktop are available for you there. So I will be um, taking you through the desktop version today um, just because I can access both post and video. Um, but I'll also be making reference to the mobile versions as well. Um, they are fairly similar um, in that they all have the same functions. Um, 
But again, I will mention mobile functionality versus desktop functionality as we go, um, but don't stress too much. Um, let's just jump in to the desktop window now. All right, so in terms of the first kind of area that we're going to be covering today, um, this is about Adobe Spark Post. And Adobe Spark Post, um, it's a program that allows you to create images, incorporate text, incorporate design assets to make really lovely looking um, posts, which you can share on Instagram, you can share on Facebook, um, really whatever social platform you're kind of tailoring it to, um, you can post from Adobe Post. Um, yeah, so it allows you to pick photos, add text, add filters um, to make really engaging content. Um, and what's great, if we do just jump right into the interface here, um, there are a number of awesome templates to start you off. Um, so when we head to the home page, we're greeted with these beautiful templates. Um, and while we're going to be actually building one from scratch today, if you see up here, there's 38,000 Spark templates you can use. So um, it really is great if you're just testing the waters, trying to get a sense of how to use the program. Um, I definitely recommend just jumping in, playing around with some of these templates um, as, as they're really well designed and awesome looking. Um, but as I said today, we are going to build one from scratch, just so you know how to use all the different elements um, available to you on Spark Post. So again, the templates, they're readily accessible on that home page there um, and absolutely use them because they are great. All right, so um, I'm just going to run you through, I guess, the interface to start off with. Um, so here we are, we've got Spark open. Um, we've got this side toolbar, which is going to be your best friend. Um, and you can see here that we're, we're currently sitting on home and that kind of gives you an overview of your account. Um, you'll have your recent projects. You can see there, I've got some test ones, which I was playing with over the weekend, which we're gonna actually recreate today. Um, we've also got um, these, post sizes so if you click on these this is a way to easily start a new project um, and we can also start new projects by using this plus button up here and this kind of gives you a number of options um, again i was mentioning that the desktop version kind of molds spark post and spark video together we can see um, we've got some post options here but we've also got the video option there um, whereas if we were on mobile, they would be two separate apps. So that's just something to consider um, when you're creating your assets on professional placement. All right. Um, again, you can drop down to this tab here and click projects. Um, that will just take you into um, your projects panel. But again, it is accessible um, via the home screen. But I mean, by the end of semester, you might have tons of projects, tons of self-care assets. Um, so jump into the projects tab just to navigate through um, if you want to repost something, if you want to find something and make changes, um, this is where to do it. This is where you access past projects. Alrighty, jumping down to this tab here, um, this is called brands and this is a pretty interesting um, feature. And what it essentially does is it allows you to kind of apply your own logo, your own colors, your own text styles um, to your different assets. So I've actually made a brand here with my personal logo. Um, I've got my logo, I've got my color scheme, which is just fairly minimal. Um, and I've also uh, um, selected some fonts that I like, again, quite minimal, that's kind of the style I like, but I definitely encourage you to jump in here if you want to kind of make your own personal brand um, that kind of feeds into your social posts, um, this is where to do it. We're not going to cover too much of the um, brand component today because it, 
it is an essential to creating assets. Um, it's kind of a nice to have, but um, if you guys are feeling confident with the assets you're creating and you wanna kind of feed your own brand into that, um, jump into the brands tab, create a logo. You can actually um, create a logo through Adobe Spark. So it'll show you how to do that. Pick some funky colors you like, as well as the fonts um, and you're away. The next thing I'm going to cover is libraries. And if you can imagine libraries um, as kind of a folder system, um, that's the way I kind of see it. Um, it's a great way to kind of bundle your content so it's manageable. Um, so if you're looking for a particular image um, relating to a particular topic, um, for example, I know self-care is something that you guys will be covering um, in your placements. You might want to make um, a folder specifically for self-care on placements. So if we jump in here, I've made one yesterday um, and it's called self-care. Um, and once it loads, we can see here, I've got a number of saved images, um, which I thought represented self-care for me. So uh, reading outside with my puppy, going on walks um, to refresh the mind and of course the yoga mat there. Um, so we're gonna be using some of these assets um, today as we develop our posts. Um, so again, you don't have to um, build out libraries, but again, if you're wanting to be organized, if you want to just access your assets really easily, um, essentially libraries is just a way of making folders. Um, so while we're here, I might encourage everyone just to jump in um, and create a new folder um, and call it self-care. Put any images in that you might um, think are relevant today. Um, and we might use one of your own images to kind of create an asset, um, which we're going to do next. So hopefully everyone's kind of jumped in, they've made their folder and they might be going through their camera roll um, and dropping some images in there. Cool, so let's just go back to home. Um, that's pretty much the overview of the interface. Um, again, it is really intuitive. It's really simple. Um, it's a great program for anyone to kind of jump in and use, even if you haven't used Adobe products before. So hoping everyone's feeling confident um, kind of with where we're at um, and I think we might just jump in and create an asset. Um, so for today's example, we're going to be making a post. Um, and I think I want to go with a story post um, today. So what I've done is I have go back a tick so I can show you how to start a new project. So using this blue button, that's usually how I would start a new project. Um, so jumping in there, you do have your options like we saw before. Um, and for this example, we're going to be making an Instagram story. So after selecting that, we're kind of greeted with this um, workspace um, and this is where we're going to build out our posts so what we have here is a range of different options um, we've got text we've got photos icons design assets backgrounds again bringing in that branding which we talked about we've got our libraries so the assets which we've pre-saved um, so it's easy enough to just jump in and drop in our assets um, and we've got a few other um, customization um, options over here. So colors, animations, background, if we're wanting to resize our assets, so we can jump in here and change it to say an Instagram tile post. Um, so I'm gonna run you through um, all of these different functions as we build out this asset today. And again, the first thing that you are greeted with is a template. Um, and by all means, use these to your advantage um, because they are designed by designers and they are really great looking assets. 
Um, as I said, though, we're going to jump in and we're going to create our own today. So what we're going to do is um, hopefully everyone's got a photo um, uploaded in their libraries. Um, and that's what we're going to do first. We're going to navigate to libraries and I'm going to find my self-care folder. And that will load um, shortly. And I'm going to drop in one of my um, preloaded images. So let's just click on this one here. And that'll drop it onto our Instagram um, story canvas here. So this is essentially where you're going to be working um, and tweaking your designs. Um, and we can see here that the image it's looking a little small. So what we can do is we can actually start to scale it um, so that it's the full size of the Instagram story. So the way we do that is we look for these circles on the corners and we can actually just stretch it out. And again, we can click and drag to move the asset on our um, canvas. And what I'm looking for is just a nice full bleed image. Um, so it covers the whole canvas today. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, hopefully everyone's dropped in an image of their own. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some text. So we're gonna navigate to our text tool here. We'll select text and we're given a range of different templates to use. Um, and they're really good looking templates. So we're actually gonna use one of these um, for our asset. So I quite like um, this arching one. There's lots of different options to choose from. But let's just go ahead and choose one that appeals to us. So I'm gonna drop this in. And again, just moving it around the canvas. If you can see um, right through the middle of our canvas, there's a dotted line. And what, what, what that is doing, it's actually guiding us um, to make sure our different elements are centered. So if I put that right in the middle, I'll get this cross. And that's telling me that's centered right in the middle of the um, post canvas. So let's just find some space up the top here because there is plenty of space to play with and place it there. And if we double click on the text here, we can actually customize it. And I'm just gonna call this early morning walks. And I'm just gonna scale it out a bit using the corners just so it's nice and big, so we can read it well. And that's kind of our first text element. Again, if we click on it, we can actually head over to this right panel here and we have a range of different options to play around with. So we can change the font. And again, there's so many different options here. Um, Adobe has countless numbers of fonts. I think they've got about 18,000 fonts. So you shouldn't have a problem finding a font for you. We can change the size of the font here. Um, so for an example, let's just click 60 and that's gonna bring it down. Um, but I liked it quite big. So let's keep it at 90. This is where we can start to do some um, kind of text effects. We've got our curved, which was the default. Um, we can do circular text. We can do the inverted semicircle, but we can also do um, more of a caption style or a paragraph style um, text style just by using align left, centered text, or using the align right there as well. Um, but I quite like my curved text, so we're going to keep that there. Down here, we can change the opacity of the text, which is essentially um, whether it's see-through or not. So it's at 100%, which means it's not see-through. If we bring that down, we can start to see that text fade away there. 
But again, I'm just going to keep it pretty prominent at 100%. A few more options down here. We've got shape, um, which essentially adds a shape behind the text. Um, this can be good for making contrast with your text. Um, again, we've got shadows. We can play around with this to add shadows underneath our text, um, as well as outlines there. So let's just keep building out um, this asset now that we kind of know how to add text. So I'm going to add another um, text element here. So I'm just going to go up here to add your text and I might go playing on this concept that early morning walks, um, they, hate, they help me not feel as stressed throughout the day, um, which might be a coping me mechanism for your self-care um, during placements. So early morning walks um, keep me calm during the day. And once we've typed that in, it goes straight onto our post. And we can pull these um, side buttons out to kind of stretch out the text um, and start to make it look a lot nicer. So for this one, I might make it a bit smaller. So let's just jump over to our text panel and let's make this one 60. Pulling out those side buttons and we might even go 50 just so it's all on the one line. Cool. So we can start to see that this is um, becoming more of a designed post rather than just an image. We're incorporating text um, and making it more of a um, designed asset. So from here, um, we can go in and look at other elements we might want to add. So we can add icons. Um, and again, using this search bar, you can really find um, a range of different icons to use. So for example, um, here we're talking about early morning walks. So we might want to get the sun rising. So I'm just going to look for sunrise. And hopefully, yeah, there we go. We're given a little sun rising. In fact, we've got lots of options to choose from. So I'm just going to click this one and it's going to go on my photo. I'm just gonna overlay that and I might place that in the middle there because it kind of follows that text there as well. And again, yours probably looks nothing like mine and that's totally fine. Um, the main thing is just to play around with it. Play around with the icons, play around with the text, bring in your own images um, because you will be creating your own assets throughout the semester. Cool. So moving down to design assets, um, this is where you can bring in just lots of different little elements. Um, things like um, more detailed icons, um, We've also got illustrations, different brushes, elements, frames that we can put on our um, posts. So for example, I might just add this frame and just stretch that out. Onto our canvas. And you see here that it's actually running over our text. What we can do is we'll head over to this little sidebar and we'll look into layer order. And what we can do is we can actually make this element um, behind our text by clicking move down. Um, we'll just go up one and you can see that the text is now in front of um, our frame. I'm just going to remove this for now because I'm going to keep it nice and simple. Um, Next, what we can do um, just to kind of enhance our images, we can go to, um, if we click on our image, we can actually go to filters. If we click on that, 
we're given a range of different options that just make our images a bit more vibrant. So I quite like this lighten one, so I'm going to keep that. Um, again, we can get more technical here under enhancements, and we can start to change the contrast, brightness, saturation, highlight shallow, shadows and warmth. Um, and again, jump in there, play around, because you really can start to customise your images um, and make them look fantastic there. Awesome. All righty, so after design assets, um, we can jump into backgrounds. Um, and this is where we can actually add backgrounds to our assets. Um, and for this particular example, I might want like a textured paper. So we can just search that in the search bar and we've got countless options. So I'm just gonna click that first one there. That's gonna go onto our canvas. And if you can see this one here, it's a little rotate tool. So if you click and drag that and pull it around, you can make it portrait. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna put this in the background and I'm going to crop the image um, just so we've got a bit of a nice composition going. <clears throat> so just dragging that one right out. So it's the entire post size. And I'm going to go to layer order and move it to the bottom. So now if we click on our image, I'm actually going to crop it. And we crop it in just enough so we can see our paper texture background. It starts to make um, for a more um, comprehensive design. So I'm just going to adjust a few things here. Just bring that text down a little bit. And I'm pretty happy where this is at. So last thing I might want to do is um, I noticed you guys have been using a hashtag on your posts. Narelle, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's swim prof x. Perfect. <laughs> this is something you might want to actually put on your assets as well. So again, what I've done there is I've just grabbed the text tool. Um, I've put in that hashtag and it's now on our asset. So let's just center that down the bottom. We might make that a bit smaller. And there it is. Um, that's kind of our first post. Um, so once you're kind of happy with where your first post is at, um, we've got a few different options to actually get it online. Um, what we can do is we can share it. Um, and if we hit publish, we'll have a range of options here. So there's standard ones here for desktop, but if you're actually on the app, um, it will allow you to post to Instagram directly. And I suspect you guys will be doing a lot of that. So um, that is something to consider um, for posts specifically. Um, it might be useful having that desktop, uh, sorry, that mobile app handy. Um, so you can just post it straight away. Um, Otherwise, what you can do is you can actually just download the asset here. Um, you might email it to yourself. You might um, airdrop it to yourself. However you want to do it, there are options there for you. Um, lastly here, you can actually start to um, invite people to your posts. So if you are um, working on a project with someone else, you can hit invite at the top there um, and you can add your classmates in and you can actually start to design assets together. All right. So hopefully everyone's kind of designed their own um, post today. Um, 
if you want to post it, go for it. I think um, Narelle's going to be getting you to post lots of um, different assets over your time on placement. Um, but that's kind of a brief introduction to Spark Post. Um, so before we jump onto Spark Video, I might um, just take a little break and allow you guys to ask any questions you might have um, while we're actually in post. And I'll just open my chat. Feel free to put it in the chat or turn your microphones on. Any questions or any sharing of like aha moments that you've had as well, be welcome. Absolutely. I think everyone's just so busy designing around. I love it. It's playing, playing and exploring, which is what we want. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, feel free to use those templates. Um, I have just showed you this um, example from scratch so that you do know how to build it from scratch. But um, those templates are really, really easy to use. Just click one, jump in, you can change text, you can change the images. Um, they're really flexible um, and a really quick way of um, designing a post. Awesome. Um, so if there aren't any questions, we might jump into um, Spark video um, and then towards the end, um, if there are questions that come up, we can kind of address them there. Alrighty, so the great thing about Adobe Spark is the, um, that it does auto save. Um, so if we click home up here, our lovely assets, has saved automatically. Um, and this is really handy, so you're not losing anything. Alrighty, so the next, um, I guess, part of Spark is video. Um, video content is definitely going off the moment. Um, and it's a really awesome way to kind of tell your stories, especially when you are um, on placement. So how we can start a new video project is, we just head up to our um, blue plus button like we did at the start. And we just want to navigate down to the video option here and we'll just click that. Um, and we are greasy with this option here. Um, and this is essentially just naming your projects. Um, so for this example, I'm just going to call it my morning theme. And I'm just trying to relate this back to self-care as much as possible. Um, again, Adobe Spark has a range of different templates to use. Um, and for Spark Video, they have suggested a number of templates. But for to today's example, we are going to start from scratch just so you know how to um, build out a video project um, on your own. So let's just hit start from scratch. And that will open in just a minute. And there can be some load time with Adobe Spark, but um, just like other Adobe products, um, they need time to boot up. So be patient, they, um, they eventually get there. All right, so this is the Adobe Spark um, video interface. Again, um, there is a mobile app for this, um, but I believe it's actually only for iOS. So that's something to consider um, for the Android users like myself out there. Um, but again, if you are doing a video project, you might find that the desktop version is a little bit easier to navigate. Um, yeah, I, I certainly do. Um, so when we land on our Spark Video interface, we're actually given um, a tutorial here um, when we're first starting out a project. Um, and I'd absolutely recommend you guys watching it, um, although I will take you through a lot of the different functions um, today. 
All right, so let's jump in. And I'm just going to do a little dance around the interface here. Um, so it's a pretty simple interface, um, really user friendly. Um, and I'm sure you guys will get to know how to use it really, really quickly. Um, starting at the top here, we've got um, preview and this allows us to watch um, our project um, to preview it before we share it. Here we've got share um, like we did before um, in Adobe Posts. We can share it to Instagram, we can download it, um, we can share it to Facebook. Um, really depends what you want to do with it. But um, I think for you guys, you, you will be using Instagram a lot. Um, just like Adobe Spark, there is um, the ability to bring other contributors into the project. So if you are working on um, a video with someone else, just head up here and you can um, type in their email address and you can start editing together. Um, over here, this top panel kind of um, gives us a range of different editing options. Um, so this first one, layout, um, kind of dictates what the screen will show. So we've got a full screen, um, which we might show video content, imagery, text. This next one, um, that's a split screen um, layout for video. So you can have text alongside some video or um, an image, we've got a caption option here um, and a title and text option there. Um, in terms of, I guess, customizing um, the way your video looks, um, you can head over to theme, this second tab here, um, and you can actually start to apply your own brand, um, which we talked about um, earlier on in the session. So if you do want to build out your own brand um, with your own logo and your own preferred colors, um, head back to the home page um, and that's where you do it under the brand tab. But we're also given a range of different themes here um, and they're really great looking. So let's just select one of these um, themes for our video project today um, and feel free to choose anyone that you'd like. I might do this one. Alrighty. So the next tab here, um, resize, it allows you to change um, the aspect ratio of your video. Um, so widescreen is typically um, the dimension you'd see on say a YouTube video or on your TV. Um, but they've also got this really handy square option, which is perfect for Instagram. So um, for this example, we are going to use um, the square dimension here. Uh, the next tab here is music. Um, and there's a range of different um, stock music here that's supplied by Adobe. Um, and we can actually click on these different tracks and start to apply the music um, underneath our video. Um, and we can also change things like the music volume up here as well. Alrighty, so next, um, in the center of our interface, this is essentially um, going to be our canvas for, for video. Um, it's going to be our working space where we can start to make our video um, move. So down the bottom here, um, this is what we call our timeline. And it's where we start to stitch together different frames um, that essentially create our video. Um, so we're going to be using our timeline mostly um, to create the order in our video. Um, so we're going to jump down there first and we're actually going to add our first um, slide, I guess, to our video. So again, I'm going to try to tie it back to self-care as much as I can here. Um, I'm going to be talking about a morning routine that might include some meditation or some yoga before um, heading out to your prep professional placements, um, just as a way to kind of manage your stress um, during those busy times. Um, so what we can do is, we can add our first slide here, We're actually given, um, if we see here, number one, this is our first um, slide to add to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of start with a title um, 
to open up our video. So if we go plus and let's just go text option and the way I'm going to start my video is I'm going to kind of address the topic. So that's perhaps how I manage the stress of placement with a healthy morning routine. Um, up here, we can make our text smaller just by using that subtract, subtract option. Also, we can make it bigger. Um, but for this example, I'm just going to bring it down so it's a bit, a bit smaller. Cool. Um, so if we go to layout, this is where we can start to apply those different um, layout options. So the split screen where I can add an image or a video but also have the text on the side there. But as this is my opening slide, I might just make it more of a title slide. Cool. So down here, um, it's essentially a little stamp that makes it your own video. Um, you can use this, and this is where you can bring in your own logos. Um, you might put a hashtag down there, but for now, I'm just gonna turn this off by, um, I'm clicking show stamp. All right, so if we can see here, there's a little timer here, and this is going to tell us how long this frame goes for. So it's currently for four seconds. And if we click the play button, we can start to see that um, Adobe Spark Video has already put a, a music track underneath our text. Um, and it's kind of starting the foundation for a video. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, my next frame. And we're going to start to talk about um, my morning healthy routine. Um, we can add video content um, just by clicking video and then uploading our own videos that we might capture on our phones. Um, but for this example, um, I'm gonna to go to photo and we actually have a range of options here. Um, I suspect that you'll all be using your own original content, um, but to kind of get across an idea, we do have other options here. We've got Adobe stock imagery, but we've also got a range of um, free photos we can use. Um, so for today's example, I'm gonna just use free photos um, just to show you how to build out this video. Cool. Um, so for this first example, um, I kind of want to get like a, a morning image of Melbourne, perhaps with the sun rising. So let's just, um, in our search bar, let's look up Melbourne sunrise and hopefully something comes up. Perfect. Let's just get this um, sunrise image. Looks like we're down in St Kilda Beach, um, which is conveniently where I'm located. Um, and we're going to, um, yeah, start our first video frame. So that'll load in, um, but down here it says two seconds for the frame. I actually wanna add text as well. Um, so to give people enough time to read the text, I'm just gonna bring this up to say five seconds. And let's just add some text by using the plus button. And let's just say, as Melbourne rises, I start my day with self-care. Again, we can make our text a bit smaller. And let's apply this split screen effect. So that's going to be our second frame here. And if we go back to our timeline, you can see that um, there's a number of square frames here. Um, and what the timeline is going to do is it's going to stitch together these frames and create a video for us. Um, this playback um, button here is actually a preview mode to view the whole video. 
Um, whereas this one kind of shows you the frame that you're working on. So if we go to um, the preview one, click on our first frame and let's just preview where we're at. <laughs> All right, so you'll see there, um, Adobe Spark Video has started to add transitions. Um, and the great thing about Adobe Spark Video is that it does this automatically. Um, so it's really quick um, to start building out a video. So we're gonna keep building out frame by frame this little video um, about the morning routine. Um, and we're eventually gonna get to say a 20, 30 second video. So let's just go to our second frame and we're going to add another one. And for this frame, um, I'm going to find an image um, of a yoga mat. And let's just go this one here. Once that loads in, there we go. We can add our text as well. And also there is another option here to add icons um, like we were doing in Adobe Post. You can add icons. So um, if you didn't want to do an image perhaps you could look yoga map under icons and there's a range of different icons you can use there so let's just add some more text um, before a busy day on placement begins I roll out my yoga mat let's make that smaller and I'm going to apply this caption style because I kind of I find this kind of a bit hard to read. So if we apply the caption style, it actually puts boxes underneath um, our text there. So again, if we go back to the start and we click play, we've now got another frame um, attached to our video with automatic transition. So it's really easy to start building out a video. So let's keep moving through. Um, following on from rolling out our yoga mat, we might get someone stretching. Let's just pretend that this is me and I'm not using stock imagery. Definitely encourage you to use your own imagery when you can. Um, let's use this image here. And for this one, I will apply the split screen and I'll add some more text. Let's get my blood flowing, for example. We've got another frame there. Um, something that I didn't touch on before is that you can actually um, click on the text um, and drag it and align it to different corners of the video. You can center it like we have there. Um, we can take it up the top there. It's really a matter of um, personal preference. Um, but for this example, I'm just gonna keep that nice and centered. Um, so now we've got our introduction frame, got our sunrise imagery with our split screen, the yoga mat, stretching, um, and I'm just going to add a couple more frames to kind of tell this story. So this next one, I might get a meditation image. Um, as that certainly is a strategy for self-care. Uh, 
Um, and once that loads in, we're just going to add some more text. Then meditate for 20 minutes to ease my thoughts. Let's just scale that down a bit. And we might bring the text down the bottom here. So we're starting to get a bit of a storyline happening here. Um, we're going to do one more frame just before we head off to our morning placement. We might have a really healthy breakfast. And let's just head over to our layout and we'll do the split screen again. And we'll just write followed by healthy breakfast. I'm now ready to take on my placement. Righty. So what we might want to do now is um, if we play back our video, the music track doesn't really um, suit, I guess, the style of the video. I'm going for more of a relaxing storytelling um, about self-care. So if we jump back in and listen to the track, We haven't um, got audio. Oh, you don't? No. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you exit out of Zoom and then come back in and when you share, there's a little box down the bottom, you can click it and we can hear your audio. Okay. No, it's very particular. <laughs> And you hear this now? No. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, but basically what I'm doing here is I'm going to look under these um, different music themes. And they do give you kind of these options um, for types of music that might speak to your project. So we've got happy, playful, relaxed, rousing, a range of different um, kind of characteristics there, but I'm going to just find a nice relaxed um, track for my, for my video about meditation um, and well-being. So what we can do there is we just select it um, and that will automatically put the track under our video. Um, which you unfortunately can't hear for the moment, but that's okay. I'll, um, I'll share the link with you and every, everyone can view it in the chat. Alrighty, so what we can actually do now is um, this option here on the video playback, um, this allows you to record your voice and you can actually start to overlay your voice um, on your videos. So it can be a nice little touch um, if you're narrating um, different concepts that you're trying to um, kind of get across. Um, and for this example, I'm going to use it and I might just um, read out this title. Um, so I'll just hit record. This is how I manage the stress of placement with a healthy morning routine. I don't think that recorded. This is how I manage the stress of my placement with a healthy morning routine. All right, so that's actually recorded my voice there. And if we play it back, which you won't be able to hear now, but I'll send everyone the link. Um, it will have my voice playing behind um, the video, which is a pretty cool feature. Um, so at this point, um, I'm just gonna play back our video and we'll see how we're going um, just to tidy things up um, and we'll get it ready to share.
So I'm pretty happy with where that's at. Um, what we can do though is, um, I've actually used a range of different images. Um, so I just wanna make sure I'm crediting um, where I've got those images. Um, so the way we can do that is we can um, grab the creators of the imagery that have used. Um, I dare say for your projects, you'll be using a lot of your own images, so you won't need to worry about um, crediting as much. But for this example, um, what we can do is we can go to our stock image and we just look for this little eye icon and we can find who the image is by. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that into our credits. And I'll do it for all of them, um, just because I want to make sure I'm crediting all the lovely images that I've used today. Um, just a couple more. I have seen um, in Adobe Post that um, it sometimes actually does the credits automatically, um, but I did run through this issue the other day where it didn't. Um, so this is a nice workaround if you do find that um, the images don't pull through automatically. And it is as easy as that, just grabbing the author um, and putting it at the end there. So. Lastly, I might add in um, our lovely hashtag. This kind of an ending note um, to our video. Um, and I don't really need this outro for now. Alrighty, so I'm actually going to go up here to the share option. And before we share it, we actually have to publish it. Um, so if we hit publish, just call it my morning routine. Um, we have options to pick a category. So I might just do education and create a link. And what that's doing is it's just generating the, the video for you there. Um, for the example of posting it to Instagram, um, I think you can do it through the share function. If not, um, you can use that download tab there, download it to your device, um, and that's where you can just automatically upload it to Instagram, um, which is really handy. Um, so I'm gonna drop this in the chat shortly. Um, if you do have questions, start to think about it. Um, and I'll drop this link in the chat once it's done um, and then we can preview that together um, and you can see how the audio and the music kind of ties in together. Um, but for now, I might stop sharing my screen because it's just loading um, and if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to jump in while that's loading. Jody, what I love is that this is all done online and so it's saved and um, if you make a mistake and you accidentally go out of the screen, it's, it remembers that it's there. So there's none of that automatic saving that sometimes we find in other platforms. And there's also yeah. this beautiful feature of that you can download everything that you do. So if we're thinking about transferring some of these um, cool skills to um creating resources to placement with content that's appropriate for the primary classroom for example we might create a cool little introduction video to a numeracy activity or an introduction for a learning center or something like that that it's quite easy to download these and then place them um insert them into a powerpoint or in or share 
Absolutely, yeah. And, and you can always jump back in and edit things. Um, so if you have new versions um, that you want to create, just jump back into the project um, and that's where you can make your changes there. Um, I've just dropped that um, video there for anyone interested um, in the final product. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of a brief introduction to Adobe Spark post and video. Um, hope everyone kind of played along, gave it a little go. I, I know you guys are going to be spending some time on both platforms over the semester. Um, so if you have any questions now, feel free to ask them. If not, we are more than happy to help with any of your questions throughout the semester. Um, you can just email um, the Adobe Hub at Swinburne email. Um, which I'll put in the chat shortly. Um, and of course, we are going to be on campus, as I mentioned, from 12.30 to 2.30 every day on level three of the library, if you happen to be in um, and you want some help. So yeah, I think that's most of what I wanted to cover today. Is, is there anything else, Narelle, that you'd like me to go through? No, that's awesome. That's really great. And I love the um, practicality of working through both examples. And And I've been playing for it. I'm a couple of weeks ahead of, of everyone else, but I even learned some new cool things. So it's what I love about this is that you just, every time you play, you learn new things um, and you can really, you know, do some really cool things to, you know, shift how we've done some things before in the past that this Adobe's um, and particularly Sparks have got the potential to, to support us to do some really cool things and look like we've got a design background. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to looking into that hashtag and seeing the work that's going to come out this semester. Yeah. It'd be awesome. Are there any questions? Um, that anyone would like to ask or an appreciation that anyone would like to, to provide? In the interim, I've just put in our um, Adobe Hub email there for any follow-up questions that you might have. Awesome. And on Canvas, there's actually an Adobe um, shell, isn't there, that everyone automatically has access to? Yeah, so everyone has access to, uh, to it. You need to, order, uh, you need to sorry, um, enroll in um, the Canvas unit. Um, but once you've done that, um, you can access a range of different resources, um, tutorials for all the Adobe programs. Um, and there is a lot on Spark um, there as well. So um, I will get a link for you guys in just a minute as well. Awesome. And of course, we've been focusing on Spark, but we have access to all the Adobe um, uh, suites. So um, for anyone who's wishing to explore um, that option's there and there's lots of training, free training that is available um, and there's also some self-paced training as well when you enroll on the Canvas Canvas site which is which is pretty cool so um, yeah which is really nice. So I'll just open it up in case there's one more quest, any question at all or an appreciation. I, I, I really love that Yuri shared an appreciation. She's like, yeah, I've got it. I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> so good luck to everyone. Use, so thank you. It just, um, I was clicking around and um, yeah, I found it easy to use. I'm sure that um, I'll, as I play around with it, I'll learn something like I'll keep learning as I go. Absolutely. And, and that's a big part of it. Just jumping in the deep end um, and playing around with it. And yeah, if you do have any questions, we're always here to help. But Adobe Spark is a pretty intuitive platform. Um, it's made for really anyone to jump in. So um, don't be at all intimidated by it. Just jump in and have a bunch of fun. It's all about play, explore and fun. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Cool, I'm conscious that we've taken you a bit over the time that we booked you for. Oh, but thank you so much. And thank you, Rowan, for being a whiz on the, the chat as well with, 
we had some some curly questions there so that was awesome to be able to decode those while we're in in the session um and we've recorded this so we can go back and have a look at it it's a beautiful resource for us um and to to work through and also i will share the chat as well because um that's a good read there's lots of links there but also um you've got those answers to come back through so thank you lisa for your thank you um and yeah i'm really looking forward to seeing how these translate into um creating resources and self-care and helping each other in our community, but also how they translate to um, placement as well, which will be awesome. And I think we'll have a little play and discussion further as we, we've got a, another sort of 20 minutes with each other after we say goodbye to you guys and then um, we'll be face to face with each other next week. So hopefully we can have a play in person um, with each other as well. So thank you, Rowan and Joel, um, work through the next stage um, next week face to face. And of course, reach out if you've got any questions or ideas as the week progresses. But I hope you all have an awesome week and um, I'll see you all next week. See you later. and make those notes and then we 